Hello guys, uh, welcome back to another interesting video. Today we have a beautiful sister. She's just back from Kenya. In Uganda, we call them Basama. When someone comes back from abroad, she's a Musama. We know she has come with a lot of money. <laughs> and this time, Harriet, give me some money. Give me some Kenyan shilling. Eh? <laughs> I am Sama. <laughs> Welcome back, my dear sister. Thank you so much. How are Thank you, doing? you for having me. I'm good. Mm. How are you doing? To work with me, I take a pesa ya Kenya. Pesa kidogo kidogo. Kidogo kidogo. Yeah, give me the kidogo kidogo you have. Mm? Kenya is a, is a place that everyone would want to visit for sure. Yeah. If you're content with me, I would say first yeah. go to Kenya. First go to Kenya. Mm. Even me, I told guys when I came back that Kenya. Is a place for content creators. Exactly. It has a lot of content yeah. and a lot of potential mm. and opportunities for content creators. Yeah, that's true. How was your experience in Kenya? My experience in Kenya was so amazing. I uh -huh. had an amazing, amazing time. Okay. And I feel like even right now, I'm talking about Kenya, but I feel like I'm missing it already. <laughs> 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 that is how much I love this. So our Kenyan viewers, yeah. we love you so much. Yeah. I love Kenyans like crazy. Mm. Because when I went there last year, these guys welcomed me. Every time they got to know that I'm Ugandan, I could see their face, faces lighting up. Honestly speaking, mm. I didn't expect that. You know, when I told some people that I'm going to Kenya, some were telling me, please don't go to Kenya, blah, blah, telling me funny stories. But I found something different. Exactly. How did you come up with the idea of going to Kenya? Of all our countries in Africa, <laughs> why, why Kenya? Kenya? <laughs> That's a question that has been asked by a lot okay. of people. So in all countries in East Africa, I wanted to first visit Kenya because I've seen a lot of people. I've seen, like, if you see, because remember, Africans we believe by seeing. Yeah, eh? yeah. So I saw people going there. An example is Uji Connect. Yep. And he made a lot of uh, views there. Mm. You made a lot of friends there. Even up to now, they're still talking about Uji and Connect. made some good money, You by made the way. good money, you yeah. know. So I was like, no, no, no. I think Kenya should be the place. Because mm. even the way they talk about it, and their content creators praise Kenya. I was like, no, I have mm. to first visit this country. Mm. That's why I chose Kenya in all the East African countries. And what I expected is what I got, mm. for sure. Interesting. Interesting. How yeah. was your first flight? <laughs> was it your first flight? <laughs> yes. Out of the country? <laughs> <laughs> so now you didn't, you didn't go by bus, eh? You were like, nah, I got a flight. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my flight ticket? I've, I've got to go. Eh? How is it called? Welcome aboard. Welcome ah! aboard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Uganda Airlines. Oh my Did goodness. you use Uganda Airlines? No, I use Air Tanzania. Why not Uganda Airlines? Anyway, <laughs> we are all Tugo Pamoja. When you support a brother, you yes, support it. Yeah. It's okay. That's true. So, Air Tanzania. Yeah. Oh, usually people who go to Kenya use. Uh, uh, Kenya Airways. Kenya Airways, yeah, that's mm. true. Why so, Air Tanzania? Me, I use Air Tanzania because uh, kind of somehow I wanted to confuse my subscribers hey. a little bit because it wasn't my first time going to Kenya. Though the first time I went, I went on the side of Nyabuhansi. Oh, south That side of Ayama. So, yeah, exactly. Southwest. So, I think it's just like one hour from the border of Uganda. From the border of Uganda. Is it one hour? I think it's something like not, I think one hour, 15 minutes or one hour, 30 mm. around there. Yeah, so it was your so first time, your, your second time to my Kenya? My second time to Kenya, but yeah. my first time in Nairobi. And your first time flying? Fly. Hmm. So you were hey. telling us you chose Air Tanzania <laughs> because you wanted to confuse them. <laughs> okay. You guys know how YouTube goes. You have to sometimes confuse them. You have to them confuse to get the views. You have to get kuninga. views. You have to kuninga. You have to get the views. You have to get the views. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wanted them to suspect, like, to be like, mm, who is she going? Uh -huh. Why is she, why is she using Your Tanzania? My dream destination. My dream destination. So mm. I was trying to uh, sh show them that I'm going to my dream destination, but they didn't know where exactly. Many of them thought you're going to America. Many of them thought I'm going to Tanzania. They thought oh. I'm going to Tanzania because I was using Air Tanzania. Oh, okay. That's what most of them thought. Because when I made a stop over in Dar es Salaam, guys, I was happy. Mm. Stepping in Dar es Salaam, at least having a foot and being like, okay. How was the mm? Dar es Salaam? From above? So my babu, it was nice. Mm. I had an amazing time up. And again, seeing that Excuse plane me. like going down. Mm -hmm. Hey, by that time of it going down, it's kind of, landing, the pressure yeah. is uh, yeah, the yeah, landing. Yeah. Like it's not so good. Yeah. Eh? The type, the, how is it called? The pressure, is it something like that? It's not the good. Stabilization like, the stabilization is not, is not so stable. Mm. You feel like, oh God. So me, I could just be like this. Oh God, please I help think us land it, well. it depends on the type of aircraft and also the condition mm. and the time it has served. Because uh -huh. me, when I, f I was flying to Kenya, 
now our conversation is about flights. Mm. For us, we are catching flights, <laughs> other people are catching <laughs> feelings. <laughs> <laughs> So me when I was flying to Kenya, yeah. when we were landing, it was okay. Mm. I just felt a little turbulence yeah, yes, while yes. in the skies, mm. going through the clouds, mm. but they were minimal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dar es Salaam was beautiful from above. Dar es Salaam was beautiful from above, and again seeing the airports, mm. it's beautiful. Mm. So if if I had a chance of moving around at least. Tanzania a little bit if I had some hours mm. though my plane had only I think 30 minutes layover like 30 well, minutes was that short to the, yeah it was so short mm. to the next flight because I had a next flight again to Kenya you didn't yeah. use the same aircraft no I didn't use the one the, which took you to Tanzania it has you, to first step in Dar es Salaam because it's its country so you went to another aircraft no I used the same air Tanzania oh. too they had oh, to just okay. change the plane to Kenya now that is what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you changed the aircraft. Aircraft, yes, yes. But you were using the same the airline. The same airline, yeah. Yes, that's yes. true. Okay. Mm. So usually it takes one hour and fourteen minutes from Entebbe mm. to if it's a direct flight from Entebbe to Nairobi. Mm. But for you it took it was how long? For me it was uh, if I count even the layovers, I think it was two hours. Two hours. Yeah, two hours and fifteen minutes. How was the experience on the plane? Mm -mm -mm -mm. First time. <laughs> Me, okay. I almost ate subjects on the plane. <laughs> that is what's my, my vlog. Of, ah, that vlog made people laugh. They brought me with things that I was like, now what is this, guys? Mm. Anyway, it's funny. First day last year. This day is about to. my experience. Actually, before even flying, I had to first call. I even called Yuji Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. I called him and asked him, hey, Yuji, how was it? How was it on yeah. the plane? What do they serve on the plane? Mm -hmm. Do they serve food? Because me, I was expecting to eat. You guys, me, I'm a foodie. <laughs> even me, I went expecting a big meal. Uh -huh. They gave me like a small bread. And you know these little plastic yeah. Plastic glass. What are they called? The containers. The transparent ones. Oh, the containers, one. yes, yes. Half of it, apple juice and a kaba a ka bread. I was like, I was totally disappointed. Yeah, that is how it so was. So I asked the the flight attendant, mm -hmm. one of the ladies. Yeah. I was expecting food. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you know, it's a short flight. It's a <laughs> if it was a long flight, we would have got a proper meal. Yeah. So that was disappointment in number one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so me, I went to the plane knowing. Okay, they're just going to give us snacks because I had asked already what they give on the plane. Yeah. So I had to first organize myself. At least I had to first leave home and I've eaten something mm -hmm. because I know on the, I'm going to spend some hours, you know, flying from here to Dar es Salaam, yeah. from Dar es Salaam to um, Kenya. So I had to first take something. But of course, like, they give some drinks because me, what I enjoyed most, eh? mm -hmm. I, I was even like, oh, thank God. Mm -hmm. At least I'm, <laughs> I'm going to board two. Um, planes, eh? two planes, mm. and they are going to still serve me on the second one. Do you understand? So you expect so to be served again. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. <laughs> on the second one, they still served us. Why do you want coffee? Now they served you again. They did serve us on the second wow. one. Wow. I was so excited. I was like, okay. Okay. At least I booked once. Mm -hmm. The flight ticket wasn't so expensive, mm. and I've eaten at least not. How much was it? I think it was because that time I booked it, it I booked it like two months before the oh. month I was going to travel. So that I was, it was just like kind of cheap. Okay. There's a time whereby uh, flight tickets are mm. that low, the prices are kind of low. So yeah. that is the time that I got, and then I booked mm. that time. So it was around two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, relatively. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Mine was around two hundred and forty-seven dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So it was two hundred and fifty dollars mm. that time, and then. Yeah, that's how I went to Nairobi. So, you land in Nairobi. What yes. time did you land in Nairobi? I landed in Nairobi. It was at 8, coming to 9. Oh, you missed the view of the city. So, I missed the view of the city. That's the thing that pained me most. Because how, about the night, how about the night view of Nairobi? The night view of Nairobi was nice. Of course. Actually, mm. when you're going to land like this, you could see Nairobi. Like, I could tell my neighbors, is this Nairobi? Because me, I didn't know how Nairobi was. <laughs> <laughs> so, me, I could tap on my neighbors and be like, Oh, for we now they're like yeah because and I got a chance those those guys were students they used okay. to study from so I think they used to fly from Zambia 
to Nairobi to study. Oh, they were because from they were, Zambia. Yeah, they were from Zambia. Mm. So I could ask, and then they were like, yeah, we are now approaching Nairobi. If you see those lights, and I'm like, wow, mm. this is so nice. Like, that was so lighting. Mm. Nairobi is really, really light. In the night, you know that. Mm, yeah, you know it that. is so like. <laughs> Me, when I was in Nairobi, I told people, mm. this is like New York. <laughs> there are some streets in Nairobi which look exactly like New York. Yeah. And people were bashing me, trashing me, man, in but the But that's the truth. Section. Yeah, it's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Like around uh, the National Archives, around there, yes. those big lights in the night. Not the National Archives. Mm, there are also talking, some other streets. It's in between the government square. Mm, mm. And I'm um, forgetting the name of the street. There are some places which gave vibes, New York vibes. New York vibes, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And also mm. the fact that they have a lot of high skyscra skyscrapers. Skyscrapers, yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, mm. hey, Nairobi is so beautiful, guys. How was your first day in Nairobi? My first day in Nairobi, guys, I have to be honest, Nairobi is fast. Nairobi was fast for me. Mm. Hmm? Because I was now seeing me, the person I was moving on, and the people that were moving besides me, I was like, I think, Chameleon pace. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cheetah pace. <laughs> because you know, like when you're vlogging YouTubers, now I'm new, I'm like, hey guys, like, yeah. hey, but now looking at my neighbors, they're just moving like, I'm the one who is, you know, <laughs> like lagging behind. Then my, my friend, Esther's like, but this is the pace of Nairobi, this is how people Esther operate. was your host in Kenya. Yes, okay. Esther and Jiguna Lifestyle, if you're watching this channel, I'll see you. thank you so much for being our Thank you host. so much for looking after our sister. <laughs> yeah. You can see she was, she was, she's all looking amazing. <laughs> thank mm. you so much, Esther and Jiguna Lifestyle. So she was the one who was guiding me on my first day in mm. Nairobi City. Mm. Ask me about my second day, my dear. Your second day, please. My goodness. My, the second day in Nairobi, I wasn't with her because the first day we were just running errands. Okay. And then I was just doing a random vlog because yeah. we were running errands, we were buying stuff, buying some souvenirs, I needed some shots of Kenya. But buying souvenirs, you just there one day? My, just, just there one day, but I just wanted to get some t-shirts so that I can oh, vlog okay. with them. I started vlogging with I them. Yeah, the t-shirts so that I can now represent. Yeah. Like right now, I'm in Kenya, yeah. you know, just to represent the country. Mm. So I had to get some t-shirts on my first day. So I told her to take me to the craft shop and she took me. And then we got them. The second day now I had to start serious work. Mm -hmm. My you dear. Are by yourself? By myself, mm -hmm. minus anyone. But I was like, no, Harriet, you can't do this. How was it? <laughs> <laughs> now to Ugandans who have never traveled yeah. or gone to Kenya. Yeah. When you go to Kenya, yeah. especially in Nairobi, mm. everything is fast paced. You find everything is different on yeah. the streets of Kenya. Yeah. You can even get knocked on the street. Mm. If you're slow paced. Mm. Mm. That's true. Okay. Mm. Your second day. So my second day in Kenya, in Nairobi, specifically in Nairobi City. I had a challenge because I'm one person like when I, let's say I'm trying to I want to ask for directions of course in Uganda it's normal you stop someone you're like asking but the person I think I was trying to ask over had problems I don't know it was a hit my dear I was trying to a hit. it was a hit. I was trying to tap on the person like before even tapping mm. The person just moved like this. I'm like, what did I do? Mm. I'm just trying to ask for directions. Mm. And then other guys saw me. And then people were just minding about their own business. I was like, wait, am I in the right country? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, no, 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 no. I think I have to ask again. But then I got a chance. I asked a security guy okay. who was closed. And then the guy was like, the National Archives are just closed. Just move a few blocks. Okay. Then you find them. Because I was going to the You know, Archives is a famous place. Yeah, it's like the city <laughs> square of Kampala. <laughs> exactly. When you're meeting someone in Kampala, yeah. you tell them I'm at city square. Yeah. Then you meet there. And also in Kenya, National Archives is the meeting point. It's a meeting point there. Yeah. So I got a chance that the Askari or the security guy directed me and then I, I went. Mm. But my dear, it wasn't. In Kenya, they don't call them Askari. They call them security guys. They call them soldier. Soldier. Yeah, to motivate them. Mm. When I was in Mombasa, okay, I was hearing, okay, I could hear mm. in the different places I, I went to, I could hear them calling, being called soldier. Soldier, soldier, soldier. Mm. And I was like, in Uganda, we call them as curry. As curry yeah. They were like, no, that is demeaning. It makes them feel inferior. Oh. But when you call him soldier, it's like, yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it makes him feel big, like, yeah. wow, I'm also respected. Yeah. Wow, that is nice. Okay, so as curry directs you. Mm. Mm. So the as curry directs me, I went, oh, no, the soldier. Oh. The soldier, <laughs> sorry. My bad, my Kenyans bad. Kenyans don't come for us. <laughs> So the soldier directs me, I go to the National Archives, I meet the person I'm supposed to meet to do content. 
then we did the appointment. At least I, I knew I was with someone who was going to direct me, but still the person was fast. Mm. So I was now getting to the, you know, the pace of how Kenyans move fast. And again, someone was telling me the reason why they're always fast like that is because, like, they have over like three jobs to go to in a day. So three you, jobs yeah, in a day. those guys have my dear. Wow, I didn't know that. My dear, Kenyans. Three jobs. Kenyans are so hard working. Mm -hmm. Guys, drop a comment if I'm lying. Kenyans Continue. are so hard working. Yeah. You find someone in the morning, they are going to a different job. When it comes Lunch to time, lunch. they are going to a different job. In the evening, they have another job. Mm. So I would ask, I was like, oh, that is why they are fast. Because they're trying to catch up with time. Yeah. And maybe their jobs are not so far from each other. So they're trying to move and then mm. catch up with the time of their job. So mm. I understood that. I was like, okay, now I have to. Could that be the reason as to why? Many international companies mm. have regional headquarters in Kenya, in Kenya. In Nairobi. Yeah, yeah. It could be the it reason. It could be the reason because yeah. of their spirit, mm. working spirit. Working spirit. They mm. have. I was like, are we the lazy ones? You got us. <laughs> <laughs> because for us, you work from morning to evening, one job, and again, you'd be like, I'm tired. But those guys, three jobs in one day. They don't tire. <laughs> yeah. So that one, I understood it, and I was like, okay. Kudos to you Kenyans because you guys have the energy. Okay. Mm? So my second day wasn't so terrible apart from the experience when I reached down like this. Mm. That experience that I got wasn't so good but then I, I had to ask mm. and then I understood mm. why maybe people were acting that way on the streets of Nairobi. But mm. yeah, I had a great time. What was your craziest experience in Nairobi? Okay, in Kenya in general. In general. Mm. Matatu! Matatu! <laughs> De Kenya <gonya> culture! <laughs> They call them Nganyas. Nganyas, mm. yes. What was crazy about that? The music. Uh -huh. The music, guys. The music, the screens. Mm. They call Nganya. them Nganyas. Nganyas. The Nganyas have crazy music. Those ones are just moving these cars. The Nganyas. Yeah, the Nganyas. The, these cars, mm. they are matat with cars installed with big sound systems, televisions. Yeah. Wow. They have Wi-Fi. They have Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. Graffitis. Okay. Man, that's a whole car culture mm, on mm, its own. Mm. Actually, it was even celebrated by uh, the royals in England when wow. they were visiting Kenya. Kenya. Mm. Most of their, the cars they used in their convoys were painted with graffitis just to celebrate their car wow. culture wow. in Kenya. Oh, I also heard there's a celebrity who came, Koshens. Yes. He's Jamaican. He came and he had to, he had to use those nganyas. You know the nganyas are these ones with with screens, yeah. with big lightings in the night, with Wi-Fi. The crazy graffitis as exactly. well. Exactly. Usually those graffitis mm. are even scary. Yeah, that's true. But it's funny, people love it. People love it the way they are. And when you but... say that, please lower the music <laughs> when you're on phone, they can even abuse you. <laughs> because they love it. Yeah. I ask, you know, when, when we are in Kenya, mm. especially we Ugandans, we have a good friend of ours, let me give him a shout out, Mr. Mwakazi, we call him Papa, oh, Mwakazi. Papa Mwakazi, and we call his house the wow. Ugandan Embassy in Kenya, yeah. <laughs> because almost every Ugandan content creator who comes from here sleeps at, there. at his place. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I asked him, mm. so why are all my tattoos like this? Yeah. So he told me, because that's what people want. All young people want those ones. Mm. If you go in a matatu, there is no music, there is no screens. Those ones are not going to work. Those are They'll boring. be out of business. Mm. They'll be boring. Mm. So I came to understand, okay. And when I used the matatus, I interacted with people and they were like, this is what we want. Yeah. Mm. So it was it was incredible. My first time in a matatu. Mm. Okay, at first I have to be honest, it wasn't nice. Like, because there's the way I could feel in my, like, as if my heart is going yeah, to boom, go out. Like, boom, boom. It, you feel it in the heart. Exactly. You feel like, I had to close my ears like this. And I was like, ah, no, no. How come these guys were sitting next to me? They're not even <laughs> holding their ears. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to just get used to but it. But you later get you got used. I got used to it. Okay. The more I could go to town, to okay. the CBD, I could get used to it every time. Mm. So I was like, and now I have to get used. And again, the music they could play there, I could just enjoy it. Because mm. they love Jamaican songs. Jamaican, they love dancehall. Ah, they love dancehall. They love Afrobeats. Did they, they play some Ugandan music? Yeah, I used to hear it, but not in the Matatus. Mm. Not in a, because the Matatus either they speak Swahili, Jamaican, and, mm. and um, how is it called? Afrobeat. Afrobeat. That's what they play in the matatus. So you can rarely hear Ugandan mm. music. But maybe when you're moving on the streets, you can hear that 
kind mm. of music on the street somehow. Mm. Yeah, you can hear the music. But I had an amazing time. Mm. I had to both those matter to each and every time. Yeah, even the ones of thicker bringing us back to thicker, yeah. that thicker road. Mm. How are they called? Super metro. Super metro. But the super metros don't have that loud music. No, for them they don't have. Yeah. I, I think the super metros are more calm, yeah. more chill. Yeah, that's true. Yes. So the ones of going to the thicker road were kind of more chill, and again I was staying on the thicker road. Mm. So I was like, ah, in the evening time it would, it would be okay because I was already tired. Mm. All I want is going back home and rest and edit mm. my videos. That's mm. all I, I could think about. Mm. But going in the morning, I would, I would want that vibe so that I can get hyped for the coming vlogs because of course I would want to go shoot videos whole day and then come back in the evening and rest. Mm. So I had an amazing time. Mm. But the, prob the, the only thing that I regret up to now, I never experienced more of the matatus. You understand? When I was mm. doing my matatu culture, okay. I did only one. So people only were telling one. me, you aren't supposed to do, to do one. They are supposed to be many. You have to exp because yeah. each one has its own identity. Yeah, that's so true. So you had to explore different. I had different. to explore different ones. So me, yes. I just only went in one mm. because I wanted the craziness in it. How it feels to be in it. You're dancing, people are seeing you. Me, people actually were just looking at me and they are wondering. I think this one is... Actually, they were, actually, they were just like, I think this one is just a foreigner. Mm. Because for some a person who is Kenyan, they're already used to that. Yeah. You can never find them standing, dancing and all. For you, we're so, standing <laughs> here. Yeah, you even shake the bamboo. <laughs> Yeah, I was there. I even, I had even actually to climb up on the seats. <laughs> <laughs> and people were telling me, Harriet, you're over disturbing your neighbors. Yeah. But you guys, we had booked the whole seat behind. Okay. But we found those guys wanted to sit there. So we told them, we are going to do a video here. Is it okay? okay. They're like, it's fine. They're also enjoying us. Okay. They were also enjoying to see us dance and all that. So for me, it was okay because we had booked we're the whole seat the behind. Uganda nyash. <laughs> By the way, coming to that, yeah, <laughs> Kenyan men mm. love Ugandan women. That's true. Like crazy. When I was there, many of them, upon getting, upon realizing that I'm a Ugandan, mm. they're like, "Bro, get me Ugandan woman." Okay, this is private. Mm. I can't share their identities. Yeah. <laughs> but I have messages in my WhatsApp on my email. Yeah. People reaching out to me. Please, I want a Ugandan woman. What? Did you get guys? approaching you after realizing you're Ugandan? No, for me, I think, okay, I think it was kind of different because like most of the people who watch me know I'm not single. They know Harriet is not single. So maybe all they would ask me, can you get us Ugandan sisters just like you? But if, if you find out these ones on the streets, maybe, okay, those ones who are in the comment section, they can tell you, can you find us a Ugandan sister? I want also, just like the same way they used to tell mm. you. But those ones on the streets, you vlog and then you tell them I'm from Uganda. Oh, wow. You're from Uganda? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. We love Ugandan ladies. We love the nyash. <laughs> <laughs> we love the way you guys respect your husbands. You know, they know we are so submissive to our husbands. So that's what they love about you guys. That's what they love about Ugandan ladies. So submissive and kneeling. The kneeling part really, really, I Makes don't know. Makes them feel like kings. <laughs> For us, it is normal. <laughs> I no, even told my wife to stop that. <laughs> the kneeling, yeah? yeah. Mm. Mm. So in Kenya, that thing really, really triggers men. Like, they feel like, wow. Because even I remember when we got a chance in Mara's home, like, I am Mara. I am Mara, if you're watching this, shout outs to you. Mm. We, when we got a chance, and uh, we got a chance, and then he gave us a Ugandan night. So we had to cook for them our ah, food. So they night. You guys my. represented us very well. <laughs> we did them a talk and they, ah, that was crazy. <laughs> I was like, go, 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 go. UG, let's go, UG, let's go. <laughs> so when you got that chance, you had to utilize it well. Of course, you couldn't. You can't just serve them without while, while standing. You have yeah. to serve them while kneeling. Wow, Mara was like, what? Mm. Can you do that again? I had to kneel down again so that you can record that on camera. Mm. And show Kenyan ladies, this is how they're supposed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> our sisters, our we Kenyan are sisters. Sorry. <laughs> Please don't get annoyed. Though. It is just culture, guys. Yeah. That is how we are groomed. From childhood, you know how it is, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. From childhood, we are groomed to respect our men, exactly. respect your, your, your elders. You cannot just give an elder something just like this, like shika, get. But a Kenyan woman, it's okay. And I don't, of, I don't say that, oh, you guys, no, because that's their culture. That's mm -hmm. how they are groomed. So it is different from the Ugandan ladies. For us, you have to kneel mm -hmm. to serve an elder, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how it is. So I think that's why Kenyan men love Ugandan women, like, so Kenyan much. Kenyan men <laughs> can go crazy for Ugandan women. 
me, I traverse the entire Kenya. Yeah. But every time a man realizes I'm Ugandan, uh -huh. the first statement. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. But Kenyans are loving people. Yeah. Kenyans are so loving. Very, very loving. Yeah. That's now, true. which parts of the country did you explore? Was it only Nairobi? I just explored Nairobi and the coast. And the coast. Yeah. Oh, so you only went to Nairobi, then coast? <laughs> Nairobi coast, that is Mombasa and, you and came Malindi. Back. And Malindi, then, and yeah, you came that's back. it, and I came oh, back. Oh, you missed Kenya. <laughs> Kenya is a big country. Yeah, that's true. Ah, you, you only covered, I think, 30% of Kenya. Of Kenya, yeah. Yes. I covered 30% of it. But I was supposed to stay longer, mm. though some things had to make me come back. But anytime, Kenyans, mm. I'm coming back. Mm. Sooner than you know, I'll be back in Kenya. But I'll not come to Nairobi. Of course, I'll go to other parts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I never visited. So, yeah. going to the coast, you used the SGR or you went by bus? I used or the you SGR. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fly again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to experience the SGR because, of course, for someone who's going to Mombasa, you have to experience the SGR. Everyone is talking about it, and you're they like, are hyping it. They yes. are saying how the SGR looks like. And you guys, now me every time I could travel, uh -huh. all I could think about is there something to eat. <laughs> Even in the SDR, I thought they give something for free. Uh -huh. Take a dress. Just you, like have a to, you have to buy. <laughs> At least in the plane is free of charge, but in the yeah. SDR you have to buy. In the SDR I have to buy, and it's understandable because the money is not a lot like the one of the plane. Yeah, only 1,000. Yeah. I think, was it 1,000? 1, 1,000, yeah. Because I saw recently they hiked they the hiked, fares a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So it was only 1,000, but because, okay, the thing that confused me more was those ladies, like they, they can come and pull that thing of drinks, cakes, what? So me, when they reached, I told my friend, can I order in? My friend was like, ah, madam, <laughs> you're supposed to pay money. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to pay money. Mm -hmm. Then she serves as like, oh, okay, let me first think of what I want. <laughs> But they are not so expensive. <laughs> yeah, they are not you mean so expensive. You, are, you weren't doing well financially. No, I was okay. Okay. But now I had to first think of coffee or what because oh. they serve like a lot. So I was like, oh. And again, it was already evening time. Maybe coffee would do. Mm. So when she came back again, I had to pay for coffee. But again, the prices are kinda. They're not so okay. They're not so high, but kinda. Mm. Yeah. So I ordered for coffee, and I was like, okay, now this is this is okay. Mm. But eh, me. How was the SGR experience? The that S infrastructure. How did you find it? The SGR is nice, starting from outside, and the way it is, like, it's so long. Like it is, I don't know from where up to where. <laughs> <laughs> the coaches, eh? The coaches are so many. Mm. Mm? But again, I had to experience, what about those ones who sit in the, is it the, the how is it called? It's first class. First class, and then yeah. the second class. So yeah. first we are sitting in the second class, oh, yeah. not the first class. But I also wanted to have that experience of the second class, though I never... The first class experience. experience. But I, I had to ask people, how is it those people who are sitting? Then they told me the seats are different from ours. For them, spacious. they sit like this. Mm. But for us, we face each other. Mm. That's the difference with the first so class. So in the first class, second class? In the second class? The second class. Yes, we face each other. the first class, other. you have more privacy. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Wow. So I had to also ask how it is. And then I it is very smooth. Mm. It doesn't go bumpy, bumpy. Really? Like, no, you didn't feel it. The SGR no, it is doesn't smooth. go bumpy, bumpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, mm. I had also hours. We, it is still they are soon starting hours. I mm. had. Mm. Uh, we shall be also having an SGR in Uganda. Wow, yeah, that it would be, be nice. very nice because yeah. if you're going to be Kenya, nice. you don't have to spend 13 hours on the road. On the road, yeah. From Uganda, it will be like two hours to the border. Mm. Then from the border, it will be like five hours to Nairobi. I think something five like or three. seven. So all together, it's like seven or six hours. Six in total. hours, yeah. But right true. now, if you're using a car, you have to be on the road for 13 hours. I can imagine. If you're driving private, those are 10 good hours. Ten hours, yeah. Flying, one hour and 14 minutes. That's true. So, you went to the coast. Yeah. What cultural differences did you find? from the coast, from the people living in the coast and also versus those living in Nairobi? I would say those ones staying in the coast are more chilled. Mm, a more little relaxed. bit. They are more relaxed Slow and paced. they are more, should I say culture? 
like those people like those people who believe in uh, how is it called? because in the course we have a lot of swahili people and we have a lot of uh, how is it called muslims is it muslims 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 somalis those guys asians are asians uh -huh. asians like there are many of them there so you find they are kind of chilled a mm. little bit compared to the place of nairobi that's what i experienced there mm. yeah and the foods the foods in the court my dear <laughs> Me, I love street foods. Eh? I love street food and had also experienced the ones of, you know. So you always get your hard time when uh -huh. you go to ease no, yourself. No, no. <laughs> I feel like everyone has to experience that. Eh? Every Ugandan who wow. goes to the coast. When, when I was in Kenya, Nabs Ara came, Marina came, mm. we all had the same experience. Mm. The spices gave us flowers. My goodness. Gwe. They you had the make, same experience? I had the same experience, Larry. I had the same experience. I've just been telling this time you used to, and I was telling you, my dear, I'm not feeling okay. I don't know what is happening. Kumbe, it is the food that is treating it's me that food. way. So like, people were telling me there is a Ugandan restaurant there in Mombasa. If, mm. you, if your stomach is not okay with the spiced there. food, you can go to the Ugandan restaurant. But yeah. at that time, I was almost leaving Nairobi, and my stomach had got... I was almost leaving the coast, mm. and my stomach had uh, almost was getting used the foods there yeah but their foods are so so spicy they spice up their foods even the sweet foods they're so so spicy so if you're not used to spices guys hey mm. that cost is not for you, not for you. <laughs> mm. it's not for you but i got used to it somehow mm. because even in uganda i love chill but mm. not so much mm. though there each and every dish has to be with it you know most and of the it dishes. has not only chili but the different spices different spices yes yeah. and that's you know true. our body immunities are not used to those spices yeah that's true yes mm. so did you swim in the ocean <laughs> again that one <laughs> you didn't <laughs> i tried it out my dear i ran away <laughs> Why? the salt the water is salty me yes. i couldn't manage it was i was burning no my skin was burning i don't know why I told really? my friend what is happening. My first was all, I was just scratching myself like, I was like, what is happening? My friend was like, But the salty the water helps your skin to glow. Uh, uh, no, 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 me it was now different. Maybe it was, it was, just, it was just a reaction. Yeah. And it was not going to last for a long time. And me, I just got out, I was like, I'm not going to handle this. I mm. went with swimming costume, but I came back with that. So you, you developed in church. <laughs> you, made, I, you made the swimming costumes were burnt as well. <laughs> No, what I'm saying, mm. I went with them to swim. Okay. But I got disappointed. <laughs> because of the water, guys, the water was so salty for me. I couldn't handle. Yeah. So I just had to move out. So every time I could go to the ocean or to the beach, I would just step and move, eh? mm. but not going inside and then diving because, no, no, it was not doing me well. Now, yeah. as a content creator, mm. how did you find Kenya in the content creation space? Okay, mm. so when it comes to the content creation space, uh, that's why I started with the other statement of if you want to start your YouTube videos and you feel you're not comfortable, comfortable wherever you are, especially in Uganda, you know how it is, mm. Kenya is a place. The reason to that is because you are free to vlog, like you are free to do all your videos as long as you don't intervene the government premises, mm. you know, like the parliament and all that. It's called the government but, square. So when you go to yeah. vlog in Nairobi, mm. avoid vlogging in the in government, government square, square. Mm. or have a guide to yeah. take you around. Yeah. Yes. That's true. So me, I would say Kenya is a country with opportunities, with a lot of opportunities. So if you want to do vlogs, mm. if you want your channel to grow, and those guys are so supportive. The infrastructure. Kenyans are so supportive. The infrastructure. The infrastructure. Is the infrastructure top is top notch. Mm. The, the the fact that they have skyscrapers, mm. like they're skyscrapers, the tall buildings. Yeah, it, just that maybe some of the buildings, the the finishing wasn't fine with me. I was I was shocked, <laughs> kind of as I like, wait, wait a minute, what is this outside of the city? <laughs> outside, yes. Yes. The finishing was kind of not, but they were like it's a design. Mm. Okay, for us Ugandans, we're used to the fine finishing. Exactly. But in Kenya, they use stones. Oh. Yeah, they use stones. Because even in the coast, I saw it a lot. Yes. In Mombasa, I saw it a lot. Most of the people used to have villas, mm. but the stones were there mm. <laughs> finishing. They have stone finishing. You know, the mm. stones were there finishing. So I was now getting used to that. Mm. But the infrastructure is good. When it comes to the internet, my goodness. Mm. They have got the fast. The internet is very cheap fast. and fast. Mm. My goodness. Mm. You can literally get. Um, bundles for one hour at only 20 Kenyan shillings. I was shocked. 
and now 20 Kenyan shillings mm. is like uh, 500 Ugandan shillings. And, and those bundles can take you for... You can upload your videos. If you're a content well. creator, mm? you have like three videos. Mm. Each video is like uh, 5 GB, 2, 3 GB. You can upload, you your, can videos. upload your videos. In just yeah. a period of one hour, you buy. They expire in one hour. But mm. if you have your content already, mm. you can upload it. So, so I think that is why many content creators are going to Kenya. Mm. And when they, when they go to Kenya, they blow up. I've seen many Nigerians, many exactly, Ghanaians, exactly. South Africans going to Kenya and they blow up and they blow up yeah so the infrastructure the internet could be a contributing, a contributing factor. factor that's true mm. and again even the people themselves they are so free with cameras me i've never seen a country that is so free like kenyans mm. kenyans are so free with cameras guys that is another thing that shocked me even the security guys themselves are so free with cameras someone mm. just comes and asks what are you doing is how wh how much is this camera someone is just looking at you but you're already filming them mm. okay someone is telling me maybe some of them are spies but you never know. But still, they are not so like eh? aggressive. Mm. Bring that here, like the way it is they here in Uganda. They come respectfully. Mm. They want to know what you're doing, and then you continue. They're like, oh, okay, enjoy, enjoy Kenya. And uh, if you tell them you're from Uganda or if you're foreigner, you're they like calm a brother. <laughs> you are like a brother. Yes, I'm saying this out of experience. Yes, yes. When you tell people you are, for, I went to KICC. Yeah. The lady at the entrance, Mama, if you're watching, she's a, she's a mukusu. You know, they like the Bagiso of Bagiso. Kenya, mm. on, the, on the other side of Mount Elgon. Mm. So I found they are an amazing soul. Mama wow. thought I'm Nigerian or Ghanaian. Oh. So because of the beard and yeah. also because of my stature, <laughs> yeah. my hairstyle, mm. she thought I'm Ghanaian or Nigerian, Nigerian or Congolese. Yeah. Mm. So now I said I'm Ugandan, she was like, oh, Matoke! <laughs> It was a cine brother. Oh, wow, yeah. Even when I went to Mombasa, when I was coming back, I missed the SGR from Mombasa, mm. and I didn't have money. <laughs> I saw that. Now, the guy who was on duty that night, who was heading the operations at night, wow. comes from Busia. Yeah, and I found out that most of those guys come from the nearby borders. Yes. Eh? Busia. Guy was no. speaking perfect in Uganda. Huh? And when I was trying to figure to sleep, Around the parking lot, yeah. some guys had given me to sleep in their car. Mm. And when he learned that I'm stranded, he came mm. and he was like, Hey, Muganda, I'm What's What's happening? What's happening? Yeah. And guy gave me wow. a spot inside, inside the SGR. Because he told me they don't allow people here to sleep. They don't allow people to sleep in the SGR. If you come late, you have to go back to Mombasa or elsewhere, then you come Find back. Find somewhere to sleep, yeah. Yes. But he gave me a spot. I slept, though it wasn't that comfortable. But I appreciate. I appreciate. So, guys, there are very, very nice, and they speak Luganda. Most of them. Yeah, that's true. Yes, that's true. Mm. So, Kenya, Kenya is really, really a place for opportunities. If you want to, your channel to grow, Kenyans are really, really supporting. Now, this is for they content even give creators. you, yeah, they even give you video ideas. Mm. They even tell you, have you gone to KICC? Mm -hmm. Have you gone to check out this place? Please visit, like, yo, who didn't want to be in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Who didn't want to be in Kenya, guys? Hey! <laughs> yeah. Me, I would want to go to Kenya a hundred times. That's the mm. thing. Like, because it's a country that I felt like, wow, mm. I'm free. Mm. I'm free because I used to be in Uganda. I used to vlog, but the, <laughs> my dear. So the words they give you, mm. hey. So did you come back a changed person? Of course, of course, I From came back Kenya? a changed person. Mm. I came back a changed person and I came back having this mentality of, okay, now I know there are people who really want the camera and there are people who don't want the camera. And I have to respect that, though, some people, you might be vlogging and you're in a, a public area and then they insert, but it's a public area, you understand? But if you don't want me in the camera, kindly tell me, don't shoot me, I will stop the vlog, I'll talk to you and then I'll continue. Don't come aggressively, guys. Mm. If you're watching from Ugandans, mm. you know what you're talking about. You're not doing this for a bad cause, you're doing this for a good cause. Now, Kindly adopt to our cameras. This goes to the government, mm. the responsible authorities and also the people. Yeah. We Ugandan content creators find a hard time making content here. Exactly. I don't know why there is always that panic mm. when people see the camera <laughs> when authorities see the camera we are not enemies My idea. the content we are doing is to promote the country just like other people are doing content creation 
is contributing a lot to the economy of Kenya, yeah. to the economy of Nigeria. That's true. Most young people have made money through content creation, That's the true. current generation right now. And we have seen In the them. last five years, mm. if you count five years back, mm. most young people who have made it in life have made it through the internet. That's true. But in Uganda here, it is still too hard for us. And we are kindly begging the government, the responsible authorities, mm. please make things easy for us. Sometimes you are vlogging, you are innocent, security comes to you, they extort money from you, they threaten you. You have also moved on budgets. Yeah. <laughs> My dear. They threaten you. But when you travel to other countries, you are free to do anything you want. And that is the reason why we travel to those countries. Yes. We love to promote our country, but the only thing is what we face in our country, guys. Yes. Limits us from vlogging from Uganda. But Uganda is really, really beautiful, we have to say. Very beautiful country. Yeah. The Pearl of Africa mm. has got a lot of things to offer. Exactly. Now, Miss Trudy came here mm. and she posted a tweet <laughs> innocently. Yeah. I didn't know you. we have <laughs> safari in Uganda. <laughs> Uganda is came for People don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's because true. we are keeping things to ourselves. If Yuji Kone comes out and you do that, you're video. blocking him, mm. and the responsible authorities don't want to support him. Okay, supporting foreigners is okay because they have the numbers. Mm. But also, if you see people who have potential here in the country, you uplift, uplift them, them because you would want them to be like the others exactly. you are inviting in the country. Exactly. Because I believe the Minister of Tourism will be proud to see Yuji connect being invited to another country yeah. to go and promote another country. <laughs> yeah, that's ah, true. we have our boy. Yeah. <laughs> our boy. He has gone to this country yeah. <laughs> because of his content. Exactly. I'm spreading the gospel of Uganda if I travel outside. Mm. How am I going to make it if home doesn't celebrate me? Exactly. That is why when people leave Uganda, <laughs> even if they go to the countries nearby, they feel like I they don't want to like come I back. They feel like I don't want to come back to Uganda. <laughs> that's, that's the honest truth, guys. Yes. That's the honest, and I also experienced this on my channel. When I was telling them I was going back to my country, like Uganda, they were telling me, please, make sure I don't overstay there. They even mm. make you like as if, you feel like as if, again, isn't this my country again? Mm -hmm. I had to come back and again promote <laughs> my country. But they feel like you're not supposed to be in that country because they have seen a lot of content creators telling people Uganda is not a good place for vlogging. I even told my friends, if you come in Uganda, my dear, be sure to move with extra cash because anytime they're going to extract money from you. And this is the honest truth, guys. We have seen this on the streets vlogging. I know? have white friends who have come mm. to vlog. They have been extorted money several times. Mm. Guys, I'm not just making statements. Sometimes when I'm vlogging <laughs> and the, the security <laughs> comes to me, they extort money. Okay. You, they, when they realize you, you are innocent, yeah. now they start saying, okay, give us some money. Mm. You get? Mm. But you've realized I'm, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Why would you ask I'm me for money? I'm not doing something wrong. Yeah. I've not, there is no law I've broken. Now why are you asking me for, for money? money? For what? So, our dear government, we love our dear country, Uganda. Mm. But the systems, the authorities, the system in place is making things hard for us exactly. to do as other content creators are doing for their countries. I believe that message has been passed. It has them. been passed to them, yeah. Kindly, we are not against anything in the country. Yeah. For us, we are just fighting for the content creation space. Exactly. Because it has a lot of potential. A lot Me, of it. My life has changed because of content creation. Mm. I've come from scratch. People have been watching me on the internet. From scratch, to who I am because of content creation. Yeah. So imagine if we have a hundred Mayanjas like me. Mm. That is revenue to the country. Exactly. The country will be doing better and their lives will be changing. Those who would have gone to the streets to start pickpocketing, to go rob people at night, they will not do that because they have where to get money from. Exactly. It's, it's just a matter of just getting your phone, guys. Not that, oh, when you're starting content creation, you should be with a camera. They also have that thing in them. A phone, only Mobile a phone. Mobile phone. Can... For us, me and my wife, when we were starting content creation, we mm. started with an Infinix Hot 5. Mm. Infinix Hot 5 those days. Like a very fun, fun phone <laughs> with a storage of, I think, 16 GB. Yeah. yeah? But look where we are. We are now using big you're cameras. You're making money on it and now you're using big cameras, you see? So we are really, really struggling to do content for 
for people to know our country mm -hmm. but if you guys can't see it for sure we are going to travel somewhere else they praise us we are going to become big in those countries uh -huh. and you guys are going to be seeing us on your screens and you'll be like is this one Uganda uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> then people start following those guys they went there they don't love their country they don't want to come back yeah the systems in place are not yeah exactly yeah okay I think this is enough. Yeah, we have talked enough for mm. sure. Harry, yeah. thank you so much for telling thank us you your so experience much. about Kenya. Yeah. I believe many content creators have learned mm. some little about Kenya. I believe many will travel. And also to, to Kenyans, thank you so much for being hospitable. Thank, thank you. Thank you for welcoming our brothers. For the love you give Ugandans. We have a home in Kenya, we call it the Ugandan Embassy. embassy. <laughs> it's in Georgia. <laughs> Papa Mwakazi, I know you're going to watch Papa this. Papa Mwakazi is doing an amazing. Please go and check out Mr. Mwakazi Adventures, yeah, his yeah. YouTube channel. That guy is very, very generous. Very generous. Yeah. yeah. So, we shall come back in another episode if you want us to. But Drop please don't forget to, to go and check out Harry, uh, Harriet Anabo. Yeah. She's a YouTuber. She has been in Kenya as we've been. She has more videos about her experiences there <laughs> Kenya, in Kenya. Yeah. The crazy culture shocks. <laughs> this was just. We were going through her experience, but yeah. she has videos about those specific experiences in Kenya. Yeah. And please continue supporting other content creators in Uganda. And thanks to the diaspora audience yeah. for always supporting, supporting us. us. Now, from us to you, we say bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs>